Hey there everybody. In this video we are going to look at a couple of examples of how we can use the electric field in order to solve problems and understand what's going on in the space around a charge. So remember first of all our definition of the electric field. It shows the direction of the electric force on a positive test charge. Test meaning an imaginary charge that you put at a particular location. Um, also the size of the force is related to the size of the electric field. And they're actually uh, related pretty simple. The electric force on a charge is equal to the electric field at that point times the magnitude of that charge. And since we're typically talking about a small charge relative to the charges that create an electric field, we we'll use a lower case Q for the charge in that relationship. So let's look at a simple example. Suppose we wanted to find the uh, force on an electron that's placed between two plates of charge. We kind of saw this example in our previous video. And so if the electric field between the two plates is 15,000 newtons per coulomb, what's the force on an electron? And so the picture might look something like that. Put an electron, that's this guy right here in the middle, inside that electric field, we know the size of the electric field, how big is the force. And so electric force is simply field times charge. We're given the field. We can look up the charge on an electron. If we forget, it's on our formula chart, but it's the elementary charge, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Notice do the math, we'll get some really small number like that because charges or um, electrons are really small. But notice that the coulombs cancel out, leaving us with the unit for Newton. And then lastly, remember that those arrows indicate the direction a positive charge would move. And so a since the electric field is to the right, that means that our electron is going to be pushed to the left. So negative charges would get pushed in the opposite direction as the electric field. And so fully answer that question and indicate the electron is going to get pushed to the left. Let's look at another example. We're going to do a lot of different things with this particular picture. Um, a dipole is simply two charges which are near each other. And so they're both creating an electric field in the space around them. And how or where you are relative to those two charges is going to determine what the electric field does. So here's a simple picture. I got two charges, one plus four microcoulombs, the other negative eight microcoulombs. And suppose we want to know the electric field at point A. And so if I kind of give the first one a red color and call it charge 1, positive charge would tend to create an electric field at point A going to the left. I'm going to color the other one blue and name it charge 2. And since charge 2 is negative, it would tend to create an electric field going to the right. And so just like all other vector operations, since they're in opposite directions, we'll subtract them. Now I'm going to guess, and this is 100% a guess at this point, that E2 is larger than E1, even though I didn't draw it that way for some reason. Um, now it's totally a guess as to which direction the net will be in. Um, so if we get a negative answer to this, that means we guessed wrong, and the electric field is really to the left. So finding the electric field due to charge 1, plug in uh, K times Q, the distance between point A and charge 1 is 0.2 meters, so I'll do 0.2 squared on bottom, and we'd get an electric field of 9 times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb. Do the same thing to find E2, this time the distance is 0.6, Count carefully along the number line there. And so E2 actually turns out as a lot smaller. It's like 26,000 newtons per coulomb. And so doing the subtraction, 
and write it like that to squeeze it in, we would get a negative answer, be something like 8.7 times 10 to the fifth newtons per coulomb. And so what the negative answer tells me is that I guessed wrong, E1 is larger, and so, and so the electric field is really directed to the left. So let's continue on and do the same thing at point B, find the electric field. At point B, the electric field due to charge 1 would be to the right, and the electric field due to charge 2 would be to the right as well. And so in that situation, we would find the individual electric fields and then add them together. So finding the electric field due to 1, it's the same because we got the same charge the same distance. Finding the electric field due to charge 2, now we need the new uh, distance of point 2, would give us 1.8 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. And so adding up those electric fields would give us a net electric field at point B of 2.7 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb. And since both of those arrows are pointing to the right, then the electric field would be to the right. So do this. See if you can do the same thing and find the net electric field at point C. So press pause, see if you can work that out real quick, and then press play and see if you did it correctly. Okay, so at point C, you would subtract the two. Um, the value for E2, again, would be 1.8 times 10 to the 6. Electric field due to charge 1, you'd have to recalculate with the new distance of 0.6 would be like 1 times 10 to the 5th Newton per coulomb, giving you something like 1.7 times 10 to the 6 Newtons per coulomb, and it would point to the left. The negative charge is real powerful there compared to the positive charge, and so it would win the electric field tug of war. The next question we might ask is where is the electric field um, around these two charges equal to zero? Let's consider and eliminate point B. In between the two charges, like in this space right here, both charges are creating an electric field to the right. What that means is that the electric field can't ever be zero. They're both going to the right would always be some value to the right, regardless of where you're at. Now point A, the two electric fields are in opposite directions, and the same thing is true at point C. Electric fields are in opposite directions. So the next question is, where can the electric field due to charge 1 be equal to the electric field due to charge 2? In opposite if they're in opposite directions, then we need the two to be equal so that they add up to zero. So consider this. At point C, the electric field due to charge 2 is always going to be greater than the electric field due to charge 1. The reason for that is Q2 is bigger than Q1, and the radius, the distance rather, for um, charge 2 is always going to be smaller. So a bigger number divided by a smaller number can't equal a small number divided by a big number. It can't possibly be the same. However, at char or at um, that should be point A rather. Let's fix that real quick. So point A they could be equal because charge two is larger, but the distance for charge two will be larger as well. So at some point x to the left of q2, excuse me, q1, keep getting my 1s and 2s messed up. So at some point to the left of charge 1, there'll be a point where the two electric fields would be equal. Mathematically, the equation would look like that. Consider that you're looking for the point x. x would be... Um, or R1 would be x minus 0.2, and R2 would be x plus 0.2. So at some point, there's a point where that would be true. That's not true to the right of charge uh, 2, 
but it could be true to the left of charge 1. And so the basic idea here is that the smaller charge needs the smaller distance in order to give you the same electric field as the bigger charge sorry for the interruption there um, but again the distance for charge 1 in yellow needs to be smaller than the distance for charge 2 because the size of charge 2 is larger and so that if that's true then the electric field could be equal to 0 next thing we might want to do is sketch a graph of the electric field versus the position and um, in order to be on the same page let's make right be our positive direction if we could do something like this then we really understand the electric field surrounding these two charges so first of all I'm going to number them again I'm going to kind of put in the electric fields that we already know, points A, B, and C. So at point A, we got it to be the left. Point C, we got it to be to the left. And then at point B, we got it to be to the right. Now, as we go closer to a charge, the electric field is going to go to infinity. And so as we get closer, the electric field gets bigger and bigger. And then when we get right next to the charge, we're going to say that the electric field is uh, equal to infinity. In other words, there'll be an asymptote at that point. And so just to the left of charge 1, the electric field is infinity to the left. Just to the right of it, the electric field is, in, is infinity to the right. So the electric field due to charge 1 is away from it, hence the left and right. As we get closer to charge 2, the electric field just next to charge 2 is infinity, also to the right, that makes the electric field go towards charge 2. And then on the other side, it would be infinity to the left. And then again, as we go farther away, it gets smaller and smaller. When we get to a position of infinity, like we get a long way away um, in our positions, then the electric field is going to go to zero. If R is infinity, uh, E would be zero. And so at some point way out yonder, the electric field will be zero. Now, remember our previous question. At some point to the left of charge one, the electric field is going to be equal, or excuse me, going to be zero when E2 is equal to E1. And then as we move farther to the left, E2 will be larger. Basically, that's because um, as you move far away, R2 and R1 are practically the same. So at a distance of, for example, 10 meters, that extra plus or minus 0.4 meters isn't going to make a whole lot of difference. And so um, the bigger charge will determine which electric field is larger. And so after that point, then the electric field is going to switch directions and go back to being to the right. Okay, so let's actually try to sketch this graph. Uh, here's my plot, and I've lined it up underneath the picture. So that zero position, the vertical axis, is underneath zero position on the picture. And then I put dashed lines underneath each of the two charges, because those are going to be where the asymptotes occur. And so I know that going from um, the left of charge 1, we're going to go from negative infinity, so infinity to the left, uh, to 0. And so this is the point where it is 0. And then it's going to become uh, positive after that, because the electric field switches directions, and the bigger charge uh, wins the electric field battle, if you will. Um, and so it becomes positive, but then it kind of goes back down towards zero as we move even farther away. I didn't really leave myself enough room there to sketch it very well. Uh, moving to the right of charge two, of charge one rather, um, we're going to go from negative, or excuse me, positive infinity, and then when we get to 
close to charge 2 will be back to positive infinity. In between, there will be some minimum value, and that minimum value will probably be to the left of 0, since charge 1 is smaller than charge 2. And so sketching the graph would be some sort of a curve that looks like that. And then moving to the right of charge 2, we're going to go back to infinity, infinity going to the left, so negative. And then as we move farther and farther away, um, the electric field gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and so it kind of goes towards 0. And so if we can kind of sketch a graph like that, um, then we really understand all the vectors um, and how they relate in this type of situation. So we're going to spend next time in class working on this electric field stuff. The two skills that we really need, we really need to understand vectors and um, how they work. And then we kind of need to be able to um, do the extremes or zeros and understand where the extremes are in the electric field around two uh, charges, possibly even more charges, um, and then where it might be zero. And so if we can do things like sketch a graph of the electric field, uh, then that would be a good way to indicate that we have that skill. So you might be asked to do something like that next time. And so if you're kind of weak on the vector, you might want to review the vectors a little bit. Otherwise, I will see you in class and we'll work on some more problems together. Till then, ta-ta.